Territory in Tampa, Florida. This is Championship Wrestling 81 on the move. And during the next hour, we'll be seeing matches direct from the Armory and also from the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium in Orlando, Florida. We'll be watching a Florida Heavyweight Championship match and the World Heavyweight Champion Dusty Rhodes defending his title against the Masked Assassin. It's going to be a great hour of Championship Wrestling, so by all means, do stay tuned. I am Gordon Foley. With me, of course, is Coach John Heath. And as I said, of course, we're watching uh, tonight direct from the Armory in Tampa, Tampa, Florida, the home of the Tampa Bay Bucks, the home of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and for over 40 years, the home of the king of sports, professional wrestling. And, John, we're going to see some great wrestling now. Well, when I was coaching, I used to be known as the Iceman, but I looked down on that ring there, the same ring in 1969, the Gory Funk defeated Kaniski for the world title, and then 10 years later, 79, Dusty Rose defeated Race for the title, and I think of all the stars we're about to see and all the action, my circulation's up. It's going. I'll tell you what, Dusty Rose, of course, uh, now the world heavyweight champion, and later on we'll see him in a the title defense against the assassin who is the claimant to that world heavyweight championship. Also, we'll see uh, Mike Graham going up against the hangman Bobby Jaggers. And he is the southern heavyweight champion. Tommy Gilbert takes on Jim Kent and we'll be watching Terry Funk go after uh, Jerry Lawler and may I just say here's the match that the entire nation has been talking about and of course Jack Briscoe takes on Dory Funk Jr. for the Florida Heavyweight Championship Jack Briscoe Dory Funk Jr. Terry Funk all three former world heavyweight champions so we do have a parade of champions tonight John this is the greatest array of stars possibly ever assembled under one roof Gordon as far as I can remember and it's right here on Championship Wrestling 81 and so let's go now to the ring in just a moment or two and uh, we'll bring you some of that great action that's upcoming. It's Carlos Colon and El Gran Napolo against the Kiwis. And John, uh, you did a little research on these Kiwis. Uh, he's known as Maniac Jonathan and Crazy Luke. Yes, they are. They are a very unorthodox style. However, you have to give them credit. They have held titles in 37 countries. And when they heard about the Summer Super Scissor Series over here, they headed right in this direction and they were accepted in. That's one of the main reasons for being here this evening. And it is uh, the Kiwi having Carlos Colon in a side headlock. Colon fires him off the rope, catches him. The Kiwi comes off with a good shoulder smash. Colon drops to the canvas. Colon, beautiful. Big oh, frog and rolling into a uh, pinning combination, but he was able to break free. Well, he had a minute, he had a minute crucifix, a late crucifix, Jordan. And most of the times, the fellow's going to be pinned, so that shows how tough and versatile these fellows are. They're, they've been around, they've been around the world, they told me they had the titles in 37 countries. You've got to be pretty good to have that many titles over here. Including the Australasian uh, tag team title. Absolutely.
the, the thousands, and I might point out, it's an overflow crowd here at the Armory on this Tuesday night where wrestling is held every uh, Tuesday night in Tampa, and an overflow crowd here tonight for this Super Summer Sizzler Series. Well, you called the shot right, Gordon, and you said that Apollo would have been wise to tag out, but I don't know whether he was in the position to tag out at that time. But you have to notice that when the Kiwis got the, got the position of advantage there, they did take advantage. A lot of times, tag team partners who are not coordinated will miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of an opponent in their corner. These fellows are going to take advantage of anything that comes their way. Fighting hard and a lot of power brings Apollo out of that lateral press. Heavy body slam by one of the Kiwis. Obvious elbow drop, but it was missed. Apollo came out of there just in time. Here comes Colon. This looks safe. Tag is made, and Carlos Colon from San Juan, Puerto Rico, explodes now on the Kiwis. In a match with tremendous international flavor here, two Australians against uh, a Puerto Rican and a Cuban. Beautiful flying drop kick by Colon, and Colon is perpetual motion once he gets into that ring. An inexhaustible supply of energy in this man. You cannot walk down the streets of Puerto Rico and mention the word of Carlos Colon that you're not stopped and conversation takes over right away in regards to this fellow and his ability. He's a legend in the island. That foot over the uh, bottom ring rope and the referee calls for the break on this. Apollo pointing it out once again, reaching out to make the tag. With Carlos Colon makes the tag, up and over that top rope. Beautiful flying drop kick and has the Kiwi down. A second flying drop kick puts the second Kiwi down. Another flying drop kick at that time. The Kiwi moved to one side. And he missed with that boot as he tried. Side cradle. He broke it. He's got to have a lot of power in those legs, Gordon. He does look strong. And here he comes with a leg over whip and a top arm lever. He can close that lever a little bit, take him back. Ooh. And this one ring, ring drop there. Uh oh. Had him, had him. El Brown Apollo going for an abdominal stretch, and it was uh, the tag was made. The second Kiwi rolled in, scored it. But uh, a couple of uh, things here that certainly I think bear looking into, uh, John. Uh, I would hardly say that that was any kind of a clear-cut victory for the uh, Kiwis. Very controversial. Right? Matsuda keeping that one leg moving and is blocking rather well, and uh, Graham realizing this suddenly moves up and uh, imprisons the other leg. So it's uh, uh, Mike was too smart to let uh, Matsuda come with a counter. Absolutely, and he's worked himself into a banana split right here, right now. And Matsuda, it's the banana split, even though it may not look that excruciating in pain, does have an awful stretch on the bicep femoris muscles. Plus the fact that you are in a predicament, because if Mike's able to rock back. But as every other hole that has you into a pinning combination or a possibility, it can be reversed. Matsuda then came in with what is called an Indian breath lock. Actually, it's a key lock. It's a leg key lock. And he's trying to come back with a leg key lock. And it could cause Mike, well, I'm not going to say it, it could cause him to give up. But it's going to cause him an awful lot of pain and take away his mobility because it's an awful stretch in the knees. I just hope he doesn't come out with an injury on this situation. Good move by Mike, though. He scooted to one side, picked up that other leg, and has now forced Matsuda into more of a compromising position because he was able to break free from it and now escapes from it entirely and has Matsuda at the disadvantage. That's a beautiful escape by Mike in reversal. He's got some control going on here. He's applying pressure to the outside. You see, Gordon, that every hole that's applied Fireman carry, three-quarter Nelson, or such as Mike was trying there with a banana split. It takes a lot of courage to employ those holes because those holes are easily reversed a lot of times by an experienced wrestler, and you find yourself either being pinned or in an awful lot of trouble, as we just witnessed there. Matt Suda suddenly unleashing a boot to the midsection and a knee to the chest and a chop to the throat, and now a rear chin lock by Matt Suda. 
I'm not sure. He's very wise in the ways of the Orient, and he knows that by taking away the head of the man, you've just about got your match in the box. Drove a knee into the middle of the spine of Mike Graham, now using those forearms across the uh, spinal column. Mike Graham coming up rather slowly. Matsuda catches him again. Matsuda, double leg dive, picks him up into a, trying to move him into a full Boston crab. Pulls him over to that full Boston crab, the referee down checking, and Mike Graham, all of those muscles being pulled and stretched in the wrong direction now, but he's got that great fighting heart, and thus far he's not conceding, but how much he can take down, I just don't know. Here's where the dead lips will have to come in, this is the supernator erectus, the action here, along with the quad tricep for the leg, he's going to actually, actually straighten those legs out, using his back muscles, and that's what he did, he straightened them out, had that suit in trouble, that suit now has a leg through fixed situation on Mike and has him in a pin, but... Into the ropes. Into the ropes. <laughs> and the crowd now warming greatly, and Mike Graham firing in some of these tactics. Once again, Collar and Elbow, the back to the ropes, and it is uh, that sort of chopping. Graham connects with an old-fashioned American right hand. And Graham delivers one to the midsection. Graham pounds away to the midsection. Matt Suda chopping to the base of the skull, but now Graham connects again. That doesn't remind me of his dad, those short right hand punches that were absolute dynamite. Quick man, a close call there. Yes, indeed. Well, that's sort of started. He went through those tactics of popping away there. A beautiful. We call out a Japanese trying to be carrying that type of support. Look at a super little look at the again. Of my thing him up again. And Matsuda reversing the same situation. Oh, my beautiful dear. Bridge up That's again. I can't believe it. Got him set up. And there's a crucifix by Mike. This could be it. Matsuda using that leverage. Came over to the right side. Uh oh. Got him with a chop that time, and it's Matsuda. Fired up the rope. Catch it, Mike Graham. Drives him to canvas with his shoulder. Flash Mike Graham. Drops to the canvas. It's Mike Graham. Up. Caught him coming in. Oh, right. Oh, right. right with the momentum. Had him. Oh, him. Oh, and the crowd goes crazy. The crowd goes absolutely wild. That's right. A beautiful last leg cradle by Mike on the reversal. And it's Mike Graham getting the pinfall on Hiro Matsuda. An outstanding victory for Mike Graham at 219 pounds over Hiro Matsuda. Good work, Mike. Final reminder, of course, of the Super Summer Sizzler Series tonight in Key West at the Key West Stadium. An outstanding night of wrestling competition and, of course, the world heavyweight champion, Dusty Rhodes, making his second title defense in Key West, this time against Dory Funk Jr., the North American Tag Team Champion. The Assassins 1 and 3 will defend their title against Jack and Jerry Briscoe. Mike Graham takes on Buzz Sawyer in a $5,000 challenge match. Jerry Lawler faces Hiro Matsuda. Wrestling 2 wrestles against Hangman Bobby Jagger. And then in a mixed tag team match of midgets and girls, it'll be Donna Cristantello and Diamond Lil against Jill Fontaine and Barbie Doll. Carlos Colon and El Grande Apollo take on the Kiwis, uh, Maniac John and Crazy Luke. There will be two other matches, but right now, it's a privilege and an honor to have the world heavyweight champion Dusty Rhodes with me tonight, your second title defense in Key West. Brother Sully, any time that we are in Key West, you know yourself, we always have a gay time. But this is very special to me because Dory Funk Jr. She was from a similar special series, 81. The grandest event in the Key or in any island or in any country throughout the world is in Key West. Super Summer Civil Series. Me and Dory Funk Jr. And this is especially special to me because it means Dory Funk Jr. finally will weep the wrath. Of this side. Not only the title, 
Not only the child, but I told you, Dora Funk Jr., remember as long as you can, as hard as you can. Lay in bed and think about it. Then ask your brother, who's only got 20% vision in his eye, ask him what it means to take an eye for an eye. So my belt, the super from a single fear will be that, but it's going to be an eye for an eye. Tonight, 8.30. Jack Briscoe, former world heavyweight champion, going up against Dory Funk Jr., also a former world heavyweight champion and currently the Florida heavyweight champion. Jack Briscoe already in the ring. Dory Funk Jr. now just entering the ring uh, to the left, just out of camera view. There you see him in his uh, corner wearing the Florida heavyweight championship belt. The ring announcer now making the introductions. Uh, Jack Frisco will be uh, introduced first, of course, as the challenger, a one-fall event. There you hear it uh, from Blackwell, Oklahoma, Jack Frisco going after Dory Funk Jr. And, of course, John, this goes back so much farther than just a match between these two and not just the Florida Heavyweight Championship, a question of pride between the Funk family and the Frisco family. And also a question of state pride, state pride also. You know, when Briscoe enters the ring, he really doesn't bring any game plan in with him. He's such, he has so much talent. He possibly has more native wrestling ability and acquired wrestling ability than any man that's ever stepped in the ring. On the other hand, Gary Funk brings the game plan in, and he's got it planned in his mind exactly what he wants to do and win. Well, just a second, Jack Briscoe's left the ring as the assassin came out there. It was the assassin. Now, wait a minute. Dory Funk Jr. out behind, catching Jack Briscoe, a Sunday punch from behind. Dory Funk Jr. has Jack Briscoe's arm spin behind it. The assassin found him with a headbutt. Jack Briscoe in trouble now, and Dory Funk Jr. brings him up. A pile driver outside the ring. The bell has not yet rung Dory Funk Jr. And here he is, an absolute cold-blooded opportunist. Jack Briscoe prone outside the ring. Dory Funk Jr. in the ring. And uh, now uh, several, com well, Charlie uh, Cook went down there, Reggie Parks, uh, Bill Alfonso, the referee in the ring, and uh, Roy Crow, Dick Crow rather, out there administering aid to Jack Briscoe, but we have a problem here now, because uh, Dory Funk Jr., and it looks like he may not have an opponent here. The assassin came by, and uh, who's to say what kind of conspiracy might have... Uh, might have taken place here. They're uh, bringing Jack Briscoe up, but he is obviously in no condition to wrestle, headbutted by the assassin. Then, wait a minute, Charlie Cook. Let's move to the ring. We've got things going here. Charlie Cook is gone, and he just slapped the Florida heavyweight champion, Charlie Cook. And open slap across the face, and Cook obviously challenging him now. The bell is rung, and apparently Dory Funk Jr. has accepted that challenge. Charlie Cook catches Dory Funk Jr., a beautiful flying drop kick coming off ropes, another flying drop kick. Dory Funk Jr. apparently accepting that challenge. And so we do have, indeed, a Florida Heavyweight Championship match going here, to the best of my knowledge, from what I was able to gather. And it is Dory Funk Jr. now. Moving, there's that vicious forearm that he is so famous for. He delivers so very, very effectively at Rock Charlie Cook. Dory Funk Jr. catching him forearm after forearm. A short distance, but extremely powerful job. He certainly could, and it could do an awful lot of damage to Charlie, and then he hopes he has possibly taken a larger title tonight. I, um, I agree with you, Gordon. I think this is a title match. He must have agreed to go with it. And he's got an opponent who has revenge in his heart from quite a while back and for quite a few reasons. So Mr. Funk, even though he's got Mr. Cook pretty well in a lot of damage here right now, he could still be in a lot of trouble. Charlie Cook, known as Gentleman Charlie Cook, taking a tremendous pounding and tremendous beating now at the hands of Dory Funk Jr. Remember, Charlie Cook had wrestled earlier. No match is easy, so Charlie Cook had to come in here at a slight disadvantage. But the feelings that he has for Dory Funk Jr., when uh, Dory Funk Jr. slapped him openly on television, Charlie Cook partially even the score tonight. But now, Dory Funk Jr. had him up, smashes him into that uh, steel ring post, and it's Dory Funk Jr., a Florida heavyweight champion, moving back into the ring. And Dory Funk Jr., an outlaw, turned loose here. 
still getting away from the fact that there is a streak of sadism in Mr. Punk, and he's going to win a match any way he can. And he will change some of his plans if I said he comes in through the And those shots, he knows that's his best advantage right here against Cook. Those shots are devastating, Gordon. Uh-oh, here he comes, a boy. Standing crossbody. Got the leg over whip. And he's got the upper arm lever. This could be all she wrote for Charlie Cook. Awful oh, excruciating thing. A game, game effort by Charlie Cook. Uh, he left, uh, wait a second. Charlie Cook reverses. He's got him down. Can he come in? He's got a three. He's got a three. Oh, boy. A big shot there, Gordon. Just thousands of fans here. Oh, boy. Jam Packer Armory going wild. Charlie Cook has just won the Florida Heavyweight Championship. Sandbag by Dory Funk Jr. As uh, Funk grabbed that belt and caught him in the back of the head. And Charlie Cook taking more punishment now from Dory Funk Jr. and the referee down there trying to break it up. Bill Alfonso trying to break it up. But nevertheless, a new Florida Heavyweight Champion, Gordon. A beautiful hole. The leg over whip. Up around Lever and a count of three. There's no getting away from it. No matter what Funk does to Charlie Cook now, Charlie Cook is the new Florida Heavyweight Champion. No question about that. And Dory Funk Jr. having sandbagged him from the rear. Now punishing him. And uh, Charlie Cook has been lacerated. And now Dory Funk Jr. hurtling the referee to one side. Remember, this match is over. Charlie Cook is indeed the new Florida Heavyweight Champion. Dory Funk Jr. Off of that top rope, down across Charlie Cook. And Dory Funk Jr. now just totally devastating Charlie Cook. But as I said, he caught him from behind him. Cook stays staggered feet. And it is uh, Dory Funk Jr. continuing to punish Charlie Cook. Continuing to use those forearms. Hurdles the referee to one side. And Dory Funk Jr., a man gone mad with rage. And wait a second, Jack Bristol has just rolled into the ring, and Dory Funk beats a hasty retreat. Jack Bristol, walking tall, has just cleared Dory Funk out of the ring, and there you see it. He may be battered and beaten, but he is the new Florida heavyweight champion. Okay, we have now uh, left uh, Fort Homer Escalade Armory in Tampa and have now switched to the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Wrestling is held every Sunday night and it's Hangman Bobby Jaggers moving out against Mike Graham. Hangman Bobby Jaggers, of course, the Southern Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. Mike Graham, the former International Junior Heavyweight Champion, has held a number of regional titles and international titles. And Graham slips away from the top of the ring combination for that point in time. And now it's Jaggers with a snap on air on Mike Graham. Drives a knee into the side of the face of Mike Graham. Now, partial lateral present once again, Mike Graham. Very, very good move. Slips away, but it is Jaggers now with a double rear chin lock on Mike Graham, keeping Graham uh, to the canvas. Jaggers at about 270 pounds holds uh, approximately a 50 pound weight edge on Mike Graham. But I think uh, if you were to compare the two in upper body strength, uh, plus uh, the tremendous strength of the legs of Mike Graham, I think you'd find great. Mike Graham perhaps holding the uh, the physical edge here on Jaggers, although Jaggers is a very big and powerful man. Good hook by Graham that takes uh, Jaggers off his feet, but Jaggers returns with a boot to the midsection on Mike Graham. Jaggers now using that elbow very effectively, and Graham in trouble now, dazed and staggered, and it is uh, Jaggers bringing him up high into the air, an atomic knee drop. Graham desperation punch that uh, staggers Jaggers and drops him down to one knee, but Jaggers still in for a uh, possible pinning combination, but uh, Mike Graham again slips away. Graham smashed into the turnbuckle. Hangman Bobby Jaggers pressing his advantage now. Arm lifts Mike Graham into that far turnbuckle. So Jaggers charges. It's Graham slipping away off to one side. Mike Graham uncorks a hard, hard, looping right hand that staggers Jaggers. Another one that catches him on the side of the jaw. Another one into the cheekbone that drives Jaggers to the canvas. And now Graham smashes Jaggers into the turnbuckle. Jaggers down on the canvas. Mike Graham goes for that figure four. Jaggers close to those ring ropes. Hangs on in desperation. He gets into the ring ropes. The referee calls for the break. The Iron Man, Reggie Parks, calling for the break. And Mike Graham forced the break. And Eddie Graham figure four leg lock. And now it is... Uh, Battle between the two Jaggers caught him that time with that elbow. Jaggers moving in on Mike Graham once again. Graham.
Graham thrown on the canvas. It is Jaggers bringing him back to his feet. Mike Graham ducks away from that punch by a Jaggers. Catches him a cross body block. A count of three. It is all over for Hangman Bobby Jaggers. Hangman Bobby Jaggers defeated by Mike Graham. But Hangman Bobby Jaggers not through with Mike Graham. And Hangman Bobby Jaggers had some comments that I think they're listening to at this time regarding Mike Graham. Mike Graham, in the world of professional wrestling, on any given night, any man can be beat for a one, two, three count. As you people know, tonight, Mike Graham, you did not do it. You cannot beat me for a one, two, three count. You couldn't do it on your best day, boy. I'm a now, Mike Graham, any time that you think that you can put this big cowboy's shoulders to the mat for a three count, you bring it on. Still at the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium in Orlando, Florida, located on Highway 50 and Econ Trail, it's Jim Kinn and Tommy Gilbert. These two have had an ongoing feud for some time now. And now these two engaged in a stretcher match, and it is uh, Jim Kent delivering a pile driver on Tommy Gilbert. You'll note that Gilbert has already been uh, rather severely lacerated, and now Jim Kent continues to apply punishment using the flat of the foot through the back into the back of the head of Tommy Gilbert. Jim Kent, who has managed several top teams around the nation, now battling on his own against Tommy Gilbert. Gilbert, of course, uh, outstanding competitor, double tough, no question about that. But now, much the worse for wear in this match against Jim Kent. Kent comes charging off from the ropes, crashes down that elbow across the chest of Tommy Gilbert. And it is Kent smiling supremely now, supremely confident of victory. There you see the stretcher being brought in. And uh, the stretcher being brought in now, it is uh, Jim Kent taking the prone body of Tommy Gilbert and rolling it up on the stretcher itself. And now watch as the uh, two men outside the ring preparing to uh, take Tommy Gilbert back to the dressing room. But Gilbert, made of much sterner stuff than that, hangs onto that rope in desperation. Tommy Gilbert not about to give up the ship here. Tommy Gilbert hanging onto those ropes and Kent stunned and surprised by this, initiates another attack on Tommy Gilbert, and Gilbert, his eyes rolling, trying to get it together now, backing away, and Kent continues to close in, pressing that advantage, continues to pummel away with that hard right hand, and now Kent going into his trunks for something, and there you can see quite plainly a pair of nuts, and he catches Tommy Gilbert on the jaw, right on the button. Gilbert is down and quite possibly out. Jim Kent secreting that... Uh, Brass nuts are now taking off his belt. And uh, not uh, unlike the situation in a Canadian lumberjack match where the lumberjacks outside the ring uh, have leather belts and the wrestler gets outside the ring, those belts are applied to the wrestler uh, with total abandon. But Tommy Gilbert, stung by that leather belt, suddenly back on his feet, left and right to the head and to the face of Jim Kent. And now Tommy Gilbert has that leather belt. And if it's a Canadian lumberjack match that you want, that's exactly what Tommy Gilbert is giving Jim Kent at this time. Tommy Gilbert chasing Jim Kent around and around the ring. And Kent, in sheer desperation, finally rolls out of the ring and the count begins. Reggie Park warning him and the count is on. And uh, Jim Kent is counted out of the ring. The match goes to Tommy Gilbert. And Tommy Gilbert had these further words regarding his situation with Jim Kent. I want you to look real good at this, man. Look real good, because that is what the lumberjacks are going to have standing on the outside, man. And they are going to use them just like this. They're going to take them straps, and every time you hit the floor, whether you're going to be driven right back into the ring, right where I can get a hold of you. And just remember this. Whoever loses, brother, has to leave, and you're going to lose because there's no way that you can run. They're going to put you back into the ring with these right here, man, with that. Think about it, Jimmy, how it's going to feel, how it felt before whenever I hit you on it. They're going to be a bunch of them with them, and then you can wave bye-bye to the state of Florida just like the fans are going to wave at you. 
Championship Wrestling 81 will be held this coming Wednesday night in Miami Beach at the Miami Beach Baseball Stadium. That's a Miami stadium where the Miami baseball team plays the baseball. It'll be this coming Wednesday night at 8.30. The Assassins will take on Jack and Jerry Briscoe in a Florida championship match. It will be Charlie Cook going up against Dory Funk Jr. The world's junior heavyweight champion, Les Thornton, will take on Coco Simone, except his challenge. Mike Graham faces Hangman Bobby Jaggers. El Grand Apollo and Sweet Brown Sugar wrestle against the Kiwis. That's Maniac John and Crazy Luke, the Kiwis. Bubba Douglas faces Buzz Sawyer. Hero Matsuda takes on Ray Hernandez. Following all regulation matches, there will be a lights-out Canadian lumberjack match between Tommy Gilbert and Jim Kent. I might point out that all of the lumberjacks will have leather belts, and any wrestler who leaves the ring will be treated accordingly with those leather belts by the wrestlers outside the ring. This will all take place this coming Wednesday night at Miami Beach. I want to take a moment right now to talk to uh, Coco Samoa is with me, and uh, of course you're facing the World Junior Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, really happy for the opportunity to meet uh, Les in the ring. The man with a lot of moves is a lot of hope, and everybody know that I wanted you to be a champion. And I say anything bad about you because you're the best. I said one thing I want to tell you, brother, don't make one mistake, otherwise I'll take away from you. Thank you so very much, Coco Samoa. You'll see him in action. Now then, if Dory Funk Jr., the assassin, Jim Kent, have some comments I think they're listening to. Jack and Gerald Briscoe against the assassins. <laughs> oh, am I ready for this one? Am I ready? My partner is ready. Briscoe's, bring your clubs, bring your sticks, bring your boots. Bring all your fighting apparel because you're going to need it. We're going to bring our paraphernalia. I do personally guarantee that the beatings that you have given us with those sticks, Jack Briscoe, you and that sneaking little brother of yours, you're going to pay for it. Head on confrontation. It's showdown time for the Briscoes and the Assassins. I have been robbed by the promoters of championship wrestling. I've been robbed by the Florida referees. And I've been robbed by Charlie Cook. But I'll guarantee you one thing. It won't take me long to get that Florida heavyweight championship back. That Florida heavyweight championship is something that I've loved more than anything else. It's made me more money than anything else. And it won't take me long, Charlie Cook. It'll take me just about 15 minutes, 15 minutes to win that championship belt back from you. Cook. You're going to pay. I've wrestled tougher wrestlers than you many, many times. Florida Championship, I'm taking it back, and I'm taking it quick. Tommy Gilbert, you won't be able to run now, boy, because in that Canadian Lumberjack match, you're going to get a beating of your life. Well, we've heard the comments from Dory Funk Jr., from the Assassin, from Jim Kent. Right now I have Jack and Jerry Briscoe with me, and of course, in facing the Assassins, uh, there's no question about it, uh, Jack. Uh, we saw what happened to Jerry. Yes, we certainly did, but Jerry is back. That's the most important thing. His shoulder is strong, and he is back. Yes, Assassins, we fully intend on bringing everything. Whatever it takes to get the job done on you guys, that's exactly what we're going to do. And Jerry's arm is strong, and he is ready for us, and we're going to bring everything right to you. Let me tell you something, Mr. Assassin. For a long time, I had an opportunity, an unfortunate opportunity, I might add, to set out and take a break. I tell you, Assassin, you did it to me, but you didn't quite go far enough. Sure, we used sticks. Sure, we used anything that we could find because there was two-on-one. Well, I guarantee you one thing, Assassin. There's no more two-on-ones. There's two Briscoes and there's two Assassins. And, brother, we mean to eliminate somebody. And it isn't going to be the Briscoe brothers. My arm is nice and healthy. And Jack's swinging arm is nice and healthy, too. If need be, we'll bring the kitchen sink to get rid of one of y'all. Well, it's all going to happen of course, the Assassins going up against Jack and Jerry Briscoe, Charlie Cook against Dory Funk Jr., the Florida Heavyweight Championship on the line, the World Junior Heavyweight Champion Les Thornton defending his title against Coco Samoa, Mike Graham against Hangman Bobby Jaggers, El Grande Apollo and Sweet Brown Sugar against the Kiwis, Bubba Douglas against Buzz Sawyer, Hero Matsuda against Ray Hernandez, and of course, it will be a light stop match, the Canadian Lumberjack match, Tommy Gilbert against Jim Kent. Here's the number to call. 
ready to go in this World Heavyweight Championship match. The referee now beginning to check uh, both competitors, and uh, we're ready to uh, pick up the action, waiting for the bell to ring for this World Heavyweight Championship match between the Assassin Number 1 and Dusty Rhodes, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. The Assassin continues with those stinging right hands to the head of Dusty Rhodes, another headbutt that has Rhodes back into the turnbuckle. And Rhodes' head rocked back again by the Assassin, and again. And Rhodes just barely hanging on, the referee checking. And Rhodes very quickly pushing that referee to one side. And again, the Assassin is stinging right hand to the head, and Rhodes hanging on now, uses that elbow effectively, uses it again and again and again and again. And again. Dusty Rhodes digging way down deep. Reached down, got that second effort, and he's got it going as the Assassin is down. And you can hear the thousands of fans, and you can see them now, gesticulating wildly at the side, and Rhodes catches him. He is actually gaining strength from this crowd that has come to support him. And as you said before, that's what led him to the title, the people. That's where he gains the strength and his desire and ability to go on. People people just come within him. Actually, the assassin's not just fighting Dusty Rhodes in there. He's fighting this moment. He is literally fighting thousands of people at one time. And the assassin is down. The assassin down and Rhodes down. Crashes down elbow across the chest of the assassin. The assassin instinctively going over toward his stomach. And that indicates obviously is some great uh, amateur training because uh, as you know you can't get pinned if you're on your stomach and that's exactly what he did through instinct. And now it's hard to tell. Both men may be lacerated or perhaps it's only Rhodes. But uh, certainly this is turning into a uh, a different dimension for a World Heavyweight Championship match in Dusty Rhodes. Weary, beleaguered, now again pushes the referee to one side, and he's caught coming in by the assassin. The assassin lifts up now Rhodes retaliating with very stinging left hand. He has worked the right to put the assassin back to the camera. And the assassin shaking his head, those cobwebs are thick now. Rhodes arm whips him off the ropes. Rhodes catches him with an elbow coming off the ropes. Another elbow down on the canvas. Rhodes coming off the ropes. Down. Oh, caught the referee. The referee bending over the assassin. And it is uh, Rhodes who caught the referee. Rhodes has him now and he's after the mask. He's after the mask and the referee is out. The assassin catches him with an elbow, drives a fist into the head of Dusty Rhodes. Rhodes took a hard blow into the solar plexus. That set him up for that fist right into the head. And the assassin calling for the count, but that referee is out of it. No question about it, the referee is out of it. And the assassin now trying to wake up the referee. The assassin trying to bring the referee to. And now, wait a minute. Dick Crow has moved in and uh, is uh, now checking the referee and working on him. And the assassin saying, no, no, get back over here. And Dusty Rhodes slowly coming back to his feet.
Johnson. Georgia throws and he's over that top rope. And so an automatic disqualification. Automatic disqualification. The assassin through a series, through a series of situations here. The assassin emerges the victor in this match. However, the World Heavyweight Championship cannot change hands on a disqualification. It was an automatic disqualification as the assassin went over that top rope. Dusty Rhodes isn't satisfied with that, I am sure. Dusty Rhodes is not satisfied with that kind of a victory. I feel that I can speak for him in this respect. But he does retain the World Heavyweight Championship. And that satisfies the people here, no question about it. They're happy that uh, their beloved Dusty Rhodes is still the World Heavyweight Champion. But I can feel very strongly, John, that the situation between the Assassin and Dusty Rhodes is a long way from being over. This just looks like beginning. This, this is such a hot issue between these two gentlemen. I just wouldn't want to be between them if they met on the outside. So. Amen to that. And hey, we'll be back in just a moment. Two great nights of wrestling upcoming. First of all, this coming Wednesday night, championship wrestling will be coming to Miami in the Miami Stadium where the Miami baseball team plays. Match time this coming Wednesday night will be 8.30. Before we talk about that, we'd like to remind you once again, of course, about championship wrestling tonight in Key West at the Key West Stadium. Match time is 8.30. World heavyweight champion Dusty Rhodes on hand to defend his title against Dory Funk Jr. And it will be Mike Graham going up against Buzz Sawyer in a $5,000 challenge match. And, uh, well, Mr. Sawyer's had quite a win straight, Mike. You know, you're exactly right. Buzz has won some matches. He's a very tough competitor, had a great amateur background, but his winning streak is about to come to an end. And when I leave Key West, I'm coming down there early, going to lay out in the sun, get a good tan, and when I leave, I'm going to leave with more than just some Key West sunshine. I'm going to leave with $5,000 of Sawyer's money. And of course, next Wednesday night, they're taking on a double tough competitor, and Hangman Bobby Jaggers. You know, Jaggers is, a, just what you said, a tough, tough competitor. He's been here in Florida before, and he's back again. Well, he's back here for a specific reason, to enhance his record, to try to better himself in the professional wrestling ranks. And he thinks he can do that by beating me. Well, I got news for you, Jaggers. You're not going to beat me. When we get in that ring, I'm going to give you a wrestling lesson because wrestling is what it's all about. Thank you so very much, Mike Graham. You'll see him in action tonight in Key West and this coming Wednesday night at Miami Stadium. Now, for more information in Spanish about Miami Stadium, here's Barbara Clary. Miércoles, el 19 de agosto, a las 8 de la noche, en el Estadio de Béisbol de Miami, la lucha libre de campeones presentará los asesinos 1 y 3 contra los hermanos Brisco. En una lucha del título de Florida, Charlie Cook contra Dory Funk Jr. Para el título de los Junior Heavyweights, Les Thornton contra Coco Samoa. Mike Graham contra Bobby Jaggers y luchas más. Miércoles, el 19 de agosto, a las 8 de la noche, en el Estadio de Béisbol de Miami. On take five today, we have a gentleman who's thrilled thousands of people while they're grambling and also while playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But tonight, he's thrilled thousands of people at Fort Homer Hesley Army and millions of fans on television throughout the nation, Charlie Cook fans, when he has apparently won the Florida Heavyweight Championship. There's a little bit of controversy on it, or there was possibly controversy, but to make a confirmation and to make sure that we do have a new Florida Heavyweight Champion, I'd like to ask Bill Alfonso, Bill, exactly what did occur in the ring. Uh, I personally heard Dory Funk Jr. state that he was going to put the Florida Championship belt on the line. The ring announcer heard that Dory Funk Jr. was going to put the belt on the line. As far as I'm concerned, as far as the National Wrestling Alliance is concerned, Charlie Cook is the new Florida State Champion. Well, fans, you've heard it. It's just been confirmed and reassured by the official of the National Wrestling Alliance. Charlie, I just imagine that makes you really thrilled and ecstatic tonight, especially to beat the man who was so insulting you several weeks ago. That's right, Coach. I am very proud. I'm proud. This, I've been up to this belt for a long time, and I finally got a chance to get in the ring for the man. I am the Florida Heavyweight Champion, and I'm going to remain the Florida Heavyweight Champion. It makes me very proud to own something this beautiful and for the people the people behind me I'm going to be the 
the, people, the Florida's champion. I'm going to be the people's champion. As long as there's nothing me, no effort, anybody, anybody who wanted to come up against me for this belt, I will take them all. Especially you, no effort. I chased you for a long time. I finally got it. I pinched your shoulders on the mat. One, two, three. I am the Florida heavyweight champion, and I'm going to stay the Florida heavyweight champion just as long as this, I know, as long as the river flows to the ocean. that there's a return clause in that contract that Mr. Trump had, knowing the gentleman that you are, I'm sure you have aspirations of giving him a return shot. So that's so? It doesn't matter. Bring it on, Joe. I understand you making a statement talking about you go take the belt away in 15 minutes. Well, let me tell you something. You better bring a lunch because I am the Florida heavyweight champion and as long as it takes me, I will stay there. So you better bring a lunch because I will wrap you and beat on you just as long as I can see you. Man who brought the courage from the football field to the wrestling mat now represents Florida as a new heavyweight champion and tonight is the cap of his career and congratulations Charlie Cook very much and thank you for our sponsor for your explanation. Now we're going to see the feud that the entire world has been talking about, the wrestling world, watching with a great deal of interest this match between Jerry Lawler, the king of wrestling and former world heavyweight champion Terry Funk, the younger brother to Dory Funk Jr., the man who just lost the Florida heavyweight championship. I might point out this match, one fall, no disqualification. Both men requesting no disqualification. They intend to settle this issue once and for all during this match. So we can go to the ring here moment. Uh, it's going to be uh, an outstanding match. There's certainly no question about this. Both men with severe enmity toward each other. It will be, as I say, once again, one fall, no disqualification. All right, direct from the armory now. It is... Uh Jerry Lawler being pulled back into the turnbuckles now by Terry Funk. And uh, you can see the two of them now. The rule book thrown out the window now. No disqualification. That means anything goes. And it's Terry Funk leaving the ring, going to the outside in the ring apron. And Terry Funk. Uh, one has to admit, John, that uh, as a strategist, he uses psychological warfare uh, like a lot of people... Uh, you know, we think of uh, blowing your nose. This guy just uh, has a constant stream of psychological warfare going after an opponent. All around his heels now is Terry Funk. Continues to deliver those hammer-like blows to the head. And Lawler, those eyes rolling skyward, he's in trouble. He exposed that. He was in trouble, but uh, he came back. Boy, talk about your effort. Will never say die attitude. I don't know where the durability sustains these two gentlemen right here. A tremendous right hand that spun the 260 pound Terry Funk completely around. The count is on. Listen to that crowd. He's on his feet at the count of nine, but he, uh, he's got to be in. He's feeling it now. He's on to Fifth City. Fifteen minutes has expired in his past already. Terry Lawler up on that uh, left side. Terry Fox catching him in the head once again. The count is on again. Listen to the thousands. Chance to count. Again, Terry Funk, and I don't know where he's getting it from. Back on his feet at the count of nine. So dazed and so swaggered, he went straight through the rope. Backwards through the rope. Totally, he's got to be out on his feet. There's only one thing that's keeping him going, and that's that tremendous pride, that fierce Funk family pride. And Funk is out there. Lawler after him. Remember, it's no disqualification. Anything goes, and anything is going right now. Fans are getting a chance to see three families ride tonight. You see the Grand family, the Wisco family, and the Funk family ride in the city. Look at this exchange of clothes, Gordon. Stop the match. The referee, I believe he's counting them both out. I'm not sure, but it appears to me. Both men counted out. They 
became so intense in their rivalry, their feud between each other, they gave no heed whatsoever to the count. I don't think they even knew that the count was on. I don't think they even realized they were outside the ring. Terry Funk, completely dazed and staggered, back right straight through the ropes, and they're at it again. They are at it again, and it is Dory Funk, or Terry Funk, rather, exploding uh, hands on uh, Jerry Lawler Lawler. trying to get them separated at ringside and John this wraps up uh, this hour of uh, championship wrestling 81 it's been a real pleasure to have you uh, with us here tonight we've been uh, here in the Fort Homer Hesperly Armory in Tampa at the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium in Orlando championship wrestling 81 on the move John thanks again thank you for having me on a historic night Gordon. thank you so very much coach Johnny and that's it Gordon Solis and so long from the Sunshine State